Howdy YouTube, this is Charles with Our Tiny Cabin Project. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button because right now I'm going to tell you how we started our tiny house adventure with only $600 down with an end game price that will bring us in well under $10,000. Now the first thing I recommend anybody do if they're thinking about starting a tiny house adventure is purchase some land. We found some land from a seller on Craigslist and we were able to pick up two adjoining parcels to start out with for under $450. After some deliberation, John and I hopped into my pickup truck the very next day to drive down to the Ozarks of Missouri to see if this deal was for real and if this guy was serious about the price on the land. Now it only cost us $300 down to have the shell of the cabin delivered. And we pay a minuscule amount monthly on the remaining balance. The payoff for the cabin is somewhere right around $5,000, and to be honest with you, I don't know that I could have built the structure for less than that. The guy was serious, and after we had our cabin delivered, we ended up picking up eight more adjoining lots, so that way we have plenty of land to enjoy whenever we go out to the cabin. Now, we had no idea of the beauty of the landscape, because when we had the cabin delivered, this is a little more of what it looked like. After three postponed delivery attempts, we finally were having our cabin delivered. Although it was in two feet of snow in sub-zero temperatures, we really didn't care. We were just excited to be on the start of our journey. Okay, now that we have our land and the cabin, the next thing was we decided to go ahead and start putting up the walls. For the walls, we decided to go with half-inch thick birch plywood. We needed eight planks that came in roughly around $50 a plank. After the lumber was cut, we went ahead and got the walls up, leaving the black screws to show to give kind of a, a rustic feel to the modern look that this type of lumber has. Also during the same time that we were putting up the walls, we also decided to go ahead and lay the flooring because we ended up scoring a really great deal on some discount laminate hardwood flooring. We ended up putting in Brazilian cherry and I believe we got all the flooring for roughly around $15 on clearance. Once we got the flooring in, the place really started to take shape to start to look like a tiny house. As it was winter when we had the cabin delivered, we needed a way to heat the place off the grid. We started with a denatured alcohol fireplace, but then we moved up to a Mr. Heater Buddy Heater and later to the Dickinson stove. The Mr. Heater Buddy Heater cost us roughly about $70. The Dickinson Marine Stove with piping cost us roughly right around $500. The Mr. Heater Buddy Heater does a great job keeping the cabin at 70 degrees off these little propane tanks, but it wasn't just quite enough, so we bumped up to the Dickinson Marine Stove. This stove is a multi-fuel stove. We made a few modifications for some extra safety precautions. This little stove burns at 8,000 BTUs. This little tiny stove heats our tiny house quite sufficiently. My only complaint is it only burns for about two hours. The cabin originally came with two lofts and we elected to not have the second loft put in because it would, it would give us 13 foot ceilings in the main living area of the cabin, which meant our sleep loft was gonna be over the porch. Now, once we were up there, we realized it just wasn't enough space to, for two people to be comfortable. So we went and purchased more lumber to extend the sleep loft out another two and a half feet. I think we maybe invested roughly about another $30 in lumber to do so. Considering the fact that John is 6'3", we realized quickly that we needed to definitely get on this. So it was one of the first things that we did. Extending the loft into the cabin allowed us to be able to put the bed long ways in the sleeping area. We use a telescopic ladder to access the loft in our micro tiny house. And now we have a significant amount of room on each side of the bed with it facing long ways. Now y'all probably noticed that window up there in the loft. Well that didn't come with the cabin when we had it delivered. Now I believe we purchased that window for roughly about $40 on Menard's website. This was one of the more terrifying projects that John and I really hesitated to start. Cutting a hole in our brand new tiny house to put a window in. Well, it came out pretty nice. Along with aesthetics, it also offers us 
ventilation when we're sleeping, as well as a safety exit in case of an emergency. We also needed some kind of kitchen area, which is mostly made of leftover material from when we were building in the walls, as well as reclaimed pallet wood, coupled with some thrift store finds that were put to creative use. With that being said, I don't think we have really more than $20 into our kitchen counter area. Using the leftover material on some thrift store finds, we made a sink out of an old bowl. And then for our water, we use a gravity-fed water system. Now, we got some slate, and we put slate down on the other side, and this is the area that we use for cooking. Originally, we were only going to have the slate here at this one end, but we later decided that what we're going to go ahead and do is carry the slate all the way across. Now, once we got a few basics done, we decided we were going to go ahead and start to make the tiny house feel more like home. We started adding art, appliances, and things like that. We hung our Survival Lily shovel and our Deke Diedrichsen original painting. We also have a ventilation fan to help with circulation when we're not running the air conditioner. And we have a TV that's a DVD player combo, and we have it on a swivel mount so we can adjust the picture for any particular angle. Now by adding all these things, of course we need a way to power them, and we're off the grid. And I think with our solar system, roughly, we have about $260 invested in our solar. Right now, all our power comes into this Renogy charge controller. We originally started with only just the Harbor Freight kit. We later then, as money came available, added a Renogy panel. In the future, we do plan on adding one more. Now, after all the complaints I've seen on the internet about tiny houses are overpriced and, oh, I can't afford to do this, Yes, you can. If we can do it, you can do it. And you can do it for as little as $600 down and under $10,000 endgame. There's no reason why you can't do it. If you guys haven't done so, hit that subscribe button so you can watch this tiny house get converted from a prefab into a beautiful tiny home with little to no money down by a couple knuckleheads. You can also go back and watch all of our videos in the Tiny House playlist because we have detailed videos of everything we've done thus far so you can get a much more up-close look. And until next time, this is Charles with our Tiny Cabin Project. Catch you later.